Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to be doing a how-to tutorial on how to wire up the warming wizard to the glyco chiller to act as a switch because this doesn't power it um, I'm going to have to spice the cable to run into the chiller as a switch and then also into the power source there so first off what you need to do uh, is four screws holding down this plate here, sorry five screws so underneath there you've got the two connections that we need to connect to so first off I'm going to take this off, this plate off okay that's the screws off now and as you can see it just lifts off here just be careful not to rip any of the insulation on the glycol tubes and more importantly the actual glycol tubes themselves so that comes off there and I don't know if you can see well, there's under there there are two switches there Two connections there, one there you can see, and one just tucked away on the other side. I am by no means an electrician, so if anybody can do, if I can do this, then it means absolutely anybody can. So sit tight, and we'll see how we get on. Now that's for that side, but I'm going to be using this side for the X3. So we we'll need to find where the connections are on for this one. So we found where the blades connect onto there just under there as you can see just under there so the idea is it's got your a kettle connection on the one wizard so I've bought an actual kettle connector here which will go into the plug socket but we're going to spice this active cable in this so we've got some extra there with some connectors so we divert the power source onto the switch and then back in to the connection going onto the, onto the plug socket so this can switch on and off and divert, and when the, when it needs to heat, it will turn the power source on and off for the warming wizard. So we'll see how we get on. So spice the live power cable. As you can see, I've got some more live power cable here ready to use. With the ends bit. Um, got the two connectors and the two blades ready to go on there. Like I said, I am no electrician. Might not be pretty, but as long as it works and doesn't blow up, I'd say it's a success. So what I'm going to do now is connect it all up and we're going to turn the glycol chiller on and set it to heat. Got the warm wizard loose so we can feel for the temperature increase on that. And hopefully it works. So that's everything connected. What I'm going to do is take this handle off so I can put the cables through there. Otherwise the lid won't close. It's an obvious design fault because Keglan knew people were going to be doing this, that's why they give us the option to do it but they've given us no, no, way, no hole to put the cable through so I'm going to have to take this off, disconnect them, get them through there I'm going to fill it with glycol, because I've just tried to turn it on when I got an error message it was empty um, my mistakes, I'm going to fill it with glycol, get it turned on and then see how it works yeah so what I've done, took the handle off here, just didn't have to do because it was quite tight about a Get the hole a bit bigger, didn't want to actually damage the unit. So here's a bit of a design flaw from Kegland, unfortunately. But it'll work fine. I've got the cables coming in here where they're spliced, going onto the, the spades, going onto the connectors. So it's tidy enough for me. The lid shuts. There you, there you can see, go onto the warm wizard and to the power source. Obviously, isolate because I've been messing with it. Um, going to fill up the glycol, get it turned on, and hopefully it works as a heating and cooling medium. We shall see. So before I uh, power it up, I'm gonna have to do a full leak test first. So the attached of silicon hose, the only 10 mil silicon hoses that I had, going in a loop here so they don't le uh, leak anywhere. Um, the leak test goes all right. I'm gonna get it fired up and make sure the heating element works. So all white right together, seems to be working fine. I've got this set to two degrees, just w with water. Got this set to two degrees, the water's at eight degrees. It's currently flowing through there, so that's working fine. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna take the warming wizard out. Just rest it there for ease. And we're gonna change the temperature to heat. So we're gonna set it to, just put it to 10 degrees just to get it, as long as it's over the eight. There we go. Once that sets, 
should switch to heating. Yeah, so it's saying it's heating. And we'll just wait and see if this turns on. If it does, I'd call that a success. So yeah, it's only been on five minutes and there is some serious heat coming out of there now. I'm happy with that. If any old idiot like me can wire this up, then anybody can. I'm very happy with that. So that is an idiot's guide of how to wire up your heating element to the Kegland G20.1 glycol chiller.